Hi, let's talk about the knee joint. So the knee joint is one of the major synovial joints of the lower limb. It's oftentimes referred to as the tibiofemoral joint, um, and it's probably worth mentioning that there are three joints in one. So there are two uh, tibiofemoral articulations and then a patellofemoral articulation, which comprise the knee joint. So here we're looking at an anterolateral view of the knee joint. I can tell that this is an anterolateral view of the, uh, the knee joint because I can see the anterior compartment and the lateral compartment of the leg there. Um, I can see a very well-defined tibia there. Uh, and the tibia is medial. Um, from the anterior compartment of the thigh, I could see the quadriceps muscle there. And then descending down over what would be vastus lateralis is the iliotibial or IT band. So with all of those landmarks, um, that would make me very confident in establishing this side as lateral and this side therefore as medial. So let's talk a little bit about um, this particular joint. So like, uh, like all synovial joints there is a, uh, a joint capsule and that capsule is made up of fibrous connective tissue um, and other tissues as well. I, I think that um, the anteriorly the the capsule is is probably the most interesting. So um, if we look round about there we have the patella and as you recall the tendon for the quadriceps femoris group so that would be the quadriceps femoris muscles um, actually develop the patella within it. So the patella therefore is a heterotopic or a sesamoid bone. And then following from the patella down to the tibial tuberosity is the patellar ligament. Um, this patellar ligament is really just a, a specialization of the quadriceps femoris tendon, um, but we call it a ligament because it's connecting bone to bone. Um, from time to time, I myself will, will call it the uh, patellar tendon or a quadriceps tendon. Uh, you will hear it uh, variously referred to as, as any of these things. And so understanding these relationships between quadriceps femoris muscles, the patella, and then that bit of connective tissue that uh, attaches distally to the tibial tuberosity is probably pretty important for you. So uh, most appropriately, it would be the patellar ligament. Maybe that's just big anatomy's way of getting you to remember more structures, but you might also hear it referred to as the tendon for quadriceps femoris or the uh, patellar tendon. Uh, it's, it's truly uh, uh, a study in, in having multiple, multiple names. Anyways, so having understood that, um, I, I think that it, it bears to, uh, to understand that the patella and that patellar ligament are replacing the capsule or are capsular themselves for the knee joint. So the anterior aspect of the capsule of the knee joint are the patella and patellar ligament. Um, some sources will also include the tendon for quadriceps or even the muscle portions of uh, vastus medialis and vastus lateralis, which you kind of see here as being capsular as well. So more laterally, there's, there's more of a, a dedicated connective tissue capsule. Um, on the 
um, on the medial side, which which we cannot see, there is connecting the medial epicondyle of the femur to the medial surface of the medial condyle of the tibia. Uh, there's uh, a, a ligament known as the tibial or medial collateral ligament. Uh, you'll hear this in the clinic as the medial or as the MCL, medial collateral ligament. Uh, this ligament is actually uh, capsular, so it is of the capsule itself. If we were to look at the posterior aspect of the, uh, the knee joint, which, which I don't have for you here, um, we could see how um, various ligament, I'm sorry, various tendons of the hamstrings and of some of the posterior leg muscles, such as uh, gastrocnemius, uh, can provide extra capsular support. Um, in particular, um, the, uh, the tendon of uh, semimembranosus, uh, semimembranosus tendon, is a capsular uh, ligament of the posterior knee, which we call the oblique popliteal ligament, uh, but that's really beyond the scope of, of this discussion. But it's just, uh, it's good to know that there are other things that are supporting the, uh, the knee, both extracapsularly and capsularly. And uh, a good example of that here is this, uh, this IT band, which is a, a strong um, extra, extra capsular support and stabilizer of the knee on this lateral side. So let's, uh, let's open this up a bit. Uh, what we can see here is that someone has cut through that, uh, that quadriceps tendon, and we can see the articular surface of the patella there. So this has been kind of reflected anteriorly or, or down. Um, I can see the fibula here. So therefore, we know that this is the lateral side. Uh, therefore, this is the medial side. Um, right here, kind of anterior to what would be the patellar ligament, is an infrapatellar fat pad that provides a little bit of uh, cushioning and support. That infrapatellar fat pad, because it's deep to the patellar ligament, would therefore be intra capsular, so it's within the capsule. And uh, we also have a, a peak of uh, some, some other structures which I will save for this slide. So this is another uh, anterior view. Um, this time the patellar ligament here, as well as the patella and the quadriceps femoris uh, tendon have been uh, reflected anteromedially. Here is the head of the fibula, HF there. So we know that that's the lateral side and that is the, oops, the medial side. The tibiofemoral joint has been flexed here. So we, we can see that uh, there's, there's flexion in this joint, and we can see that the condyles of the uh, of the femur here. So this would be the lateral condyle, and this would be the medial condyle of the femur. We're also able to see um, the collateral ligaments, um, the cruciate ligaments, and the menisci. So let's uh, let's work our way inward, um, we've begun our discussion of the MCL, so that is the medial collateral ligament, also known as the tibial collateral ligament. Um, this is the capsular ligament, which runs from the medial epicondyle of the femur down to the medial surface of the medial condyle of the tibia. Um, it is both capsular and it is the weaker of the two um, collateral ligaments. And it has an attachment 
to another structure here called the medial meniscus, which we'll discuss in a moment. The other collateral ligament we can see over here, kind of outlining it here. It's a generous outlining, and that is the fibular collateral ligament. The fibular collateral ligament, or the lateral collateral ligament, that's fun to say, uh, extends from the lateral epicondyle of the femur to the head of the fibula, as we can see there. And it's usually found just deep to the, uh, the tendon of biceps femoris on the head of the fibula. Um, this is an extracapsular ligament, um, and of the two, it is the stronger of the collateral ligaments. Now, I mentioned um, this structure here. That's what we call the medial meniscus. There's also a lateral meniscus here. So this is the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. The menisci are fibrocartilaginous rings which help to cushion and reduce friction within the, uh, the joint capsule. Uh, the medial meniscus is more C-shaped. Um, it's enmeshed with the tibial collateral ligament. And it's not very mobile at all. It, it's somewhat mobile, but, but between the two, uh, the lateral is much more mobile. Now the fact that the TCL and the medial meniscus are enmeshed here shares some uh, some clinical significance and that is with with a glancing athletic blow and, and usually for understanding how these things happen um, you might want to consider a, a oops a lateral blow here to the knee so let's presume that the force came in the direction of the arrow so if that happened then the knee could buckle laterally. And what that would do is it would open up the medial surface of the knee, perhaps tearing or even avulsing the tibial collateral ligament. And as one tears, so does the other. So with the tear of the MCL, the medial meniscus also uh, is very likely to tear. So let me kind of clear this up here. The, uh, the menisci are intra, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, it's, they are intracapsular. So they are within the capsule. The other uh, intracapsular ligaments that we can see are the anterior cruciate ligament, and we can see it's a little more obscure, the posterior cruciate ligaments. So cruciate means crossed. And so what we have is an ACL and a little more robust PCL ligament that cross within the capsule. So the anterior cruciate ligament or the ACL, which is a very common ligament to be disrupted in an athletic injury, runs from the anterior interconjular area of the tibia, which we can see right there, up to the posterior surface of the lateral femoral condyle, which we can almost see there. Between the two, the ACL is the weaker. It has a very, very poor blood supply to it. And uh, this ACL, which I'll color in here as red, helps to prevent anterior displacement of the tibia. Another way of saying preventing anterior displacement of the tibia would be preventing posterior displacement of the femur as the two relate to one another. Um, the ACL also helps to prevent hyperextension of the knee joint. 
Let me erase that. I guess we can actually look at this from the, the posterior view here. And uh, we have a much better view, therefore, of the PCL, the posterior cruciate ligament. So again, uh, here's the head of the, the fibula. That's a, a dead giveaway that this is the lateral view. And then this is the medial view. Uh, here is the lateral condyle of the femur and the medial condyle of the femur. That makes this the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. But here is our PCL our posterior cruciate ligament that's running from the lateral surface of the medial um, femoral condyle um, which is there down to the uh, the intercondylar fossa there. Um, the posterior cruciate ligament um, is the stronger of the two cruciate ligaments and it helps to prevent posterior displacement of the tibia or anterior displacement of the femur as well as preventing hyperflexion of the knee joint. And then finally uh, just a, a quick uh, discussion of some of the neurovasculature found in the vicinity of the knee. So here we're looking at a, a posterior view of the, uh, of the knee. Uh, here is the, the medial side. Here is the lateral side. And let me discuss with you for a second how I could um, identify that. Um, here I can see the, uh, the head and neck of the fibula, which is lateral. Um, another way for me to, to tell that is I can see the sciatic nerve descending down in this popliteal fossa. And so here I can see the tibial division continue down through the popliteal fossa and into the posterior compartment of the leg. And then going here is that common fibular nerve. And that common fibular nerve, of course, is going to separate into the superficial and the deep fibular nerves. But one of the things, one of the relationships that, that we want to see is it wrapping around the, the head and neck of the, uh, the fibula right there, making it susceptible to injury. So we can see, you know, not only do we have the tibial nerve here, that's the most superficial and lateral element of the popliteal um, fossa. We also have the popliteal vein, which is a vena comitans of the popliteal artery, which we can see right there. The popliteal artery is the deepest and the more medial of the structures within the popliteal fossa. And having these other structures in the way sometimes makes uh, finding that popliteal artery for palpation uh, difficult. Now the knee is a very dynamic joint um, and dynamic joints sometimes have issues with, uh, with blood supply, but there are a series of what are known as genicular arteries. Uh, there are um, at least five of these genicular arteries, which uh, variously service uh, different parts of the uh, of the knee. Uh, some coming from the the popliteal artery directly, others from from other sources as well. But that's that's truly beyond the scope of uh, of of this particular um, conversation. I just wanted to point out that uh, the knee is an area rich in arterial anastomosis. So that is, the, uh, that is the, the review of the knee joint. I thank you for your time.